Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I have for you a really glammed out look using the Jaclyn Hill palette for a third time and probably going to be my last tutorial using that for a little while. I have some other things that I want to try. I just wanted to do a really glittery glammed out look for you um, just to show you the versatility of the palette. There's so many things that you can do with it and it's such fun. I've had such a good time using it and I know I will enjoy it for many years to come. So if you would like to see how I got this look, please keep watching. Good afternoon YouTube. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Sherry Ward and I'm here today to show you a makeup look made once again with the Jaclyn Hill palette. I've got some Stila um, magnificent metals that I've been dying to use and so I'm just gonna have a little bit of a makeup playtime today and see what I come up with and I'm really glad you're here to join me for it so let's get into it. I'm gonna start off today with my Smashbox Photo Finish Primer. This is one of the very first primers that I ever tried when I first started really getting into makeup. It's very silicone and it's kind of one of those those um, it's really kind of one of those primers that either you really like it or you really don't. Um, I really like it just because it makes everything really smoothed out and it gives kind of a nice slip. So uh, foundation, especially full coverage foundations, seem to kind of glide over it a little bit easier. Those that kind of um, dry too fast when you're trying to get them put on, they dry before you can get them blended out. Those are the um, kind of foundations that I like to use Smashbox photo finish with and this is just the basic beginning one. Um, I know they've got all kinds of different variations of this now but this is just like the OG photo finish. I'm just gonna put that all over the place. Um, I don't really just concentrate this on my areas with pores or texture. I put it pretty much all over. I don't put it on my neck but I pretty much put it all over my entire face. After I get it spread on really well and evenly, I just take my fingers and just kind of press it in so that if there are some areas that show some visible pores, it kind of fills those in. And I really do like the Smashbox um, pore reducing version of this particular primer. It's a really good one. This does prolong the, the life of your foundation and the way your makeup looks. Um, there are others that I usually like a little bit better than this, but today um, I'm using a high <laughs> full coverage foundation and so I just wanted to use something that I know would pair very well with that. Also, I'm doing a live stream tonight, my first live stream on my channel, so hopefully I'll see some of you guys there. This will be posted after that's already happened, um, but I plan on doing lots of those because my favorite part of the YouTube community is just connecting with other people that love makeup as much as I do and just talking about it and hanging out and chit-chatting and sharing ideas and talking about favorite products. It's my favorite thing in the world to do. And so I plan on doing a lot of that and I hope some of you will come along and join me for that. Um, I'm going to go ahead first before I start with the foundation and it must be a Smashbox day. I'm going to use a Photo Finish Primer Water. I love this stuff. If it doesn't do another thing, it's just a really nice and refreshing drink for your skin. Also, I live in Oklahoma and it is like a 822 degrees here right now. Humid and hot, no cloud cover, just straight up sun beaming down. And so it's nice to have a little, a cool little refreshing spritz of something. Whew. I love it. So I just kind of fan myself and let it dry a little bit and while I'm doing that I just make sure I have everything else ready to roll. Um, when this first came out and this is um, Urban Decay All Nighter and you're probably familiar with that name because they have um, finishing sprays called All Nighter and um, anyways when I first saw this I thought oh my gosh you know I saw it swatched I saw it uh, demoed on lots of videos <laughs> and it is straight up Spackle. We've talked about spackle before. Spackle. 
So when I first went to purchase this, I had no idea what shade. They had numbers and .5s and I was so confused. And so what I often do is I kind of go off of the shade recommendations by people who have similar skin tones as I do. Unfortunately, when I bought this, I heard the wrong thing. I heard 3.5 whenever she really said 4.5. And that's Emily Noel is who I'm talking about. And so I ended up with one that made me look like Casper the Ghost. It was not cute. And so I went back and got a 4.5 hoping that if I um, put them together, I would come up with something in the middle. I have not experimented with that. So I'm going to do that now. I may end up having to pull in something else in order to um, match the shade up to me. But I'm a little bit tan. So I'm going to give this a shot today. I'm just going to do these equally. I'm going to put one pump of each on my hand and we're going to go from there. This is super, super full coverage. It's probably the most full coverage foundation that I have. And I've worn it a couple times before and I liked it then. But this is looking majorly white on my hand. I'm still going to give it a shot and I have to wipe it off and start over. So be it. I'm just going to dot it all over my face. And this dries really fast, so I'm not going to do much talking. I'm going to get my damp beauty blender and get to blend it. have a talk about this little light this little light of mine that I don't want to shine okay let's have a talk about it I spent about 30 minutes before I went to to film today I closed doors I closed blinds I put pillows in front of areas I moved my mirror I adjusted it upwards and downwards I did about 14 different things alas it's still on my face so I'm not sure what to do from here other than maybe Ask some of my friends to come in and help me where I'm actually sitting here with the light on my face and they're going around my room trying to figure out where it's coming from. I promise you I'll get to the bottom of this. You'll find out real quick that I don't give up on anything. If I'm trying to figure something out, I will work at it and work at it and work at it until I find it. Well, I think that I have enough coverage. I, I'm looking in my mirror that's not so close up. And it doesn't look, to me, like the foundation or the match is too bad. I'm going to spray some of the primer water. My This is really thick and my beauty blender, my beauty blender went a little bit dry on me. So I'm going to go through and just kind of shear a little bit of this out. So... Especially on my neck, it feels extremely dry, which usually means it's not very blended out. So I'm going to go through here and I certainly don't want a massive line of demarcation going on here. I always go on my ears a little bit just so it matches everywhere. All right. I'm going to leave it at that. Now on to color correction. I'm going to use today something that I haven't used in a long time and I can't remember why I stopped using it. Maybe because I found something I liked better but I need to decide whether or not I'm going to keep it in my rotation or I'm going to give it away. Um, so I'm going to give it another shot today and see how it ends up. This is the, this is the Becca Under Eye Brightening Concealer. And the reason I bought it initially is because it's very peachy, and usually peachy um, correctors are what help cancel out some of the darkness under my eyes. So I'm going to go right into the very, very inner. Is it just me, or do any of you like absolutely hate to dig your fingers into little jars of product? Especially if you have any kind of fingernail length. And recently, um, I started getting these SNS gel 
um, nails. It's like my natural nail, but it has like this gel coating on top. And so my nails are actually a little bit longer than they ordinarily have been in the past. And when I dig in there, I end up with a whole bunch of that product underneath my fingernail. And that sicks me out a little bit, actually. I know I can use a brush, but I really like the warmth of my finger with these kind of products. Um, because they really help melt it in. So, anyway. For the next five minutes, I'll dig the nasty concealer out from under my fingernails. I I really got into where I really, really, really like to have things in a little tube, a squeezy tube, or have a wand or something like that. It makes it um, more suitable for me. You know, I'm that problem child that wants everything her way. Not really, but. All right. Next, we come to concealer. I can't seem to get away from this. I'm going to use my Tarte Shape Tape. I've got light, medium, and light. Um, again, I made a shade mistake when I first ordered this. And actually, you know what? I did make a shade mistake on this. This is the one where they didn't have my shade for the longest. And so I ordered the light thinking I could get away with it. And not so much. So what I do is I use the light medium in kind of this triangle formation here on both sides because it doesn't take as much as regular concealer and then I go back in with the light and I just put a few dots in there where it just adds a little brightness in there actually I just put one dot because it was the wand was saturated and then I go in with my little bitty uh, real techniques sponge And I just go through there, smooth it out, get it all worked in. Okay, I am seeing it is doing, you know, a good job on covering. Um, but I do think that my concealer is not going on as smoothly. Um, what I ordinarily use is the Tarte uh, Color Corrector and it seems like this area that looks real exaggerated with the crepiness, it usually smooths that out a lot better than this is seeming to go on today. I'm going to use the Laura Mercier Secret Bar It would be amazing if I could talk. Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder, and for some reason this one always hangs me up. Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder with the same Real Techniques baby, baby sponge, and I just dip in there and set it. I don't really do baking. Baking seems to make things more crepey for me, so I just set it and leave it. The cool part about this Laura Mercier powder, and I don't know why or what magic is contained in this little jar, but it looks kind of dryish at the beginning when I first put it on, but then later on it just kind of smooths out. Like as my skin warms it up, it smooths it out even more, and I love that. And same goes for the translucent Laura Mercier translucent uh, powder that I use on my face. And I use my large beauty blender to put that on and I just use the side that I haven't used and, si and since the all nighter foundation is really thick and dry I don't set anything but my t-zone with the powder and I go through with a brush this is a morphe brush that came out of a travel set it doesn't have a number and I just kind of smooth everything out all the way around with very little powder, just kind of hit everywhere. For bronzer today, I'm going to go in with the Chocolate Soleil Bronzer by Too Faced. It's so funny, I got this little bitty um, trial size, a little sample, and I ordered a full size because I loved it, 
And ever since then, I've been using the sample and I haven't even hit pan. So I have a full size backup that's probably gonna last me for the rest of life. But anyway, since it's a little bit darker and a little bit on the ashier side, the grayer side, that's not the word I'm looking for. It's a little bit on the cool side. It's a little bit on the cool side. I like to kind of pinch my brush and almost use it for a mini contour. Nothing dramatic, but it does put that shadow down if you concentrate the color there. And after I get that down, I go back in and I am tapping off my brush in a waste basket. Then I just go back in and just hit all my normal bronzing areas. Cheeks. Around my forehead. And I'm going a little heavy with this today since my foundation's a little light. And I also like to pinch it, go up the sides of my nose. And I just kind of do a mini contour that way too. I'm not into really dramatic contours, but I do like to define it a little bit. And then I go through right along my jawline. Once I have it all laid down, I just kind of go through, back through, and just go in circular motions here. Like that. Go away, light. Go away. I like to put on my fountain, um, I like to put on my highlighter first because when I put my blush over it, it seems to really smooth it out where it doesn't look like it's such a distinct line. So today I'm gonna use Urban Decay Afterglow Highlighter. Looks like that. It's kind of a mix between a champagne and a golden kind of highlighter. And I'm using the Morphe Y11. Oh Lord, I think I might have put a little bit too much of that on, but I'll just blend it out pretty quick with the powder brush. Tip of my nose, Cupid's bow, chin, eyebrow, I like to go right along the very inner bridge of my nose. After I deal with that brush, I like to take a fan brush. This is a Jumbo Kabuki Fan SS023 by Crown Brush. And I just like to go over it with this. It just kind of diffuses it better, I guess. All right. I'm glowing, I'm glowing, I'm glowing. Finally, for my blush, I'm gonna use something a little bit bright. It's called Blushing Bride by Tarte. Looks like this. It looks kind of intimidating when you look at it in the pan, but it's really pretty on the cheeks. It's kind of like one of those natural flush of color looks. Whoa. It's in my Marley. 
my big doggie's making her way through. All right, when I finish with all my powder products, I just go through with that first brush that we use and I just kind of smooth it all out. I go a little bit heavy at the beginning and this kind of chills everything out a little bit. All right. So, we're spackled <laughs> and highlighted and blushed and all that jazz. And after that step, I like to go in with a setting spray. I use the e.l.f. Mist and Set just because it's kind of a less expensive um, highlighter. <sighs> Good gravy. Hi, Mama. What's it doing? Come here. What's it doing, pretty? What you doing, pretty girl? Are you hot? I know it. It's 857 degrees. I know. You want to see my friends? Say hi, friends. Hi, friends. Say hi, friends. Oh, that's my sweet girl. I love you. Yeah, that's my sweet girl. <laughs> All right, back to business. Sorry, folks. Can't ever turn down a puppy dog pet. <laughs> Elf. Mist and set. Just to kind of knock the powder off. And since she's scared of spray bottles, she's probably going to bamoose out of this room. <laughs> I guess not. You feeling brave today? <laughs> I love her so much. Okay, after that dries, I'm going to go in with the Milani Eyeshadow Primer. This is a very inexpensive product, but it works great. Just a tiny little bit. And this is one of those primers that really needs to be patted. If you rub it, <laughs> it kind of fogs up. And because primer is meant to keep everything on, it like locks in and won't come, come off if you mess it up. So I just start patting right from the beginning. Oh, don't get it there, by the way. <laughs> don't get it right where I just put it. Next, I take just the single shadow creme brulee by Wet n Wild, and I use this just to set my eyeshadow primer. Morphe M158, which is just a spoolie and an angled brush, and just brush my brow hairs, which are almost non-existent, up and over before I start shaping them. I'm, I'm going to try an eyebrow product cocktail today. I'm going to start off with the NYX Micro Brow. I'm going to use this just to kind of outline and make my shape with it. Um, it's kind of on a waxier formula, and so it gives you more control. Two different colors of the ColourPop eyebrow pencil, Redhead and Bang and Brunette. I'm going to use the Bang and Brunette on the outside third of my tail area. I'm going to make that a little bit darker than the rest. Kind of makes it a color gradient. 
I don't like the front of my brow to be this dark, but I do like the end of my brow to be more distinct. So that was the Bang & Burnett. This is the redhead one. I already forgot the name. Redhead, haha. <laughs> This ColourPop one is a lot creamier formula. You definitely have, at least for me, I have to set it with a powder or it really does the slip and slide. But I do like how easy it goes on and I do like the, the colors. All right, one down, one to go. the Too Faced Brow Envy with the Morphe M207 which is just a angled brush. I'm going to use the dark color here for the outside third of my brows where I use the Bang & Brunette. Ashier shade for the beginning two third of both brows. And this really sets that creamier formula of the ColourPop brow pencils down where it won't move. If I just leave it to itself, if I accidentally touch it or if I sweat, it's moving and you don't want your eyebrows moving. <laughs> well. All right, like that. So now that I have everything set, I'm gonna go back in with the Morphe spoolie and just very, very lightly comb through them. Just kinda melts everything together and puts everything as far as the natural brow hair as far as the natural brow hairs go puts them in the right direction and then finally I use the NYX tinted brow mascara in chocolate this adds a little bit of warmth and also sets my natural brow hairs where they won't move around and stick out and look crazy because they can. In the future, there will probably be occasions where I do my brows off of camera because they take a really long time as you can see. And just to, for the sake of the video not being so long, but for my initial few videos, I wanted to show you how I do it. Um, at the very end, I take the Q-tip that I was using and just kind of smooth out the front part. It kind of fades it out a little bit, I guess. Just kind of helps the beginning part of the brow not look so, so harsh. But sometimes, like that, <laughs> I take too much off. And that's one of the downfalls, too, with the color pop that I forget about. It just moves around too much. So I'm going to go back in with the NYX. Put 
take that back. <laughs> to try something today that I saw on one of those really quick Instagram tutorials. Um, I'm going to start off with the Stila Magnificent Metals and this is called Smoldering Satin and this is the one I got for my birthday. It's a new one. I had um, the light pink, I had the rose gold, and I had the kitten shades and I like them all except for the, the ballet pink was real patchy and weird and I could never get it to work. Um, but what this person did is they just started with putting the glitter down and then they built all the rest of the shadow around it. So I'm going to try that and see how it goes. I might regret it, but I'm going to give it a give it a whirl here. This dries fast. It's amazing how hard it is to keep your eyes open when you don't want to. I mean, keep them closed when you don't want to. So I'm gonna fan this and try to let it dry a little bit. Oh man, that's so beautiful. And then go in on the other eye. I'm gonna attempt not to get it on my crease this time. Is so stinking pretty you guys not sure how far to go out here but I'm gonna stop there and I'm just gonna look down 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 let this dry a little bit okay we're gonna go in with the Jaclyn Hill palette I'm going to start off with what I normally start off with. I'm going to use the Morphe R40. It's a really big fluffy brush. And I'm going to go into MFEO and Silk Cream and MFEO. These two for the transition. I love this big fluffy brush because it just puts it on and blends it out so beautifully. And yes, that is kicking glitter all over my face. But maybe it's taking it off of the crease that I didn't want it there anyway. <laughs> That's good for that. I'm going to see what I can do about getting this glitter off my face. Not really wanting to move. I'm going to take my Delium Tools 776 and I'm going to go into the shade uh, Mocha. I'm going to go into the outer corner with this and pull it almost all the way into the crease. This is a beautiful milk chocolate shade. It's got some warmth to it, but it's kind of almost a neutral in between. I have a little 
bump there from where I removed a eyebrow hair that was way down here. So yeah, I have a lovely little bump there. You fix one problem, you create another, right? I'm just going to intensify this just a tad on this side. Obviously, this is a really kind of dramatic look. Okay, looks like this. And with this look, I really wanted to have some of this burgundy color here. It looks doesn't look that burgundy, but it kind of shares out to a burgundy. Um, I'm going to real quick go back in with my beginning brush and kind of maybe re deposit a little bit of that warm transition back over the top. Um, I'm also going to go in with another palette. I'm going to quickly go in to my Stila in the Lights palette, um, in the Light palette, and go in with the Bone Shade just to highlight my brow bone all the way across. At the end, I may put a little bit of one of the shimmer shades in the Jaclyn Hill palette that I want to start off with. Just this really nice light color from the Stila palette. Because I like to start off with the matte brow bone shade and then back with the transition brush just to smooth that area. All right, I'm gonna choose a little bit of a smaller blending brush. This one is a Luxie 229 tapered blending brush and it's just a smaller blending brush. And I'm gonna go into the burgundy shade which is called Chip right here. And I'm going to start off really slow, tap my brush off, and go right on the outside corner with it. Right on the, right on the outer V. And I'm going to take the Delium Tools brush and blend that out a little bit. That just darkens the outer corner. Go back and do the other eye the same way. I'm going to pull this into the crease just a little bit more. Yeah, I like that better. And I'm 99% sure that starting off with the glitter was not a good choice. But you live and learn. And I won't do that again next time. <laughs> so I'm going to go around the outside with my transition. And then I'm going to go in with a clean BH Cosmetics 101 and I'm just gonna blend it all. I'm gonna try to avoid the glitter. And as a final little tweak to my eye look here, I'm gonna go into this shade right here which is called Beam. Just with the tiniest little bit and put it right under the arch of my brow. Just to add a little bit of shine right there. As if the glitter all over my face wasn't enough. Alright. Okay, now I'm going to uh, move to the bottom lash line for a minute. I'm going to go into the 
and put it real tightly up onto my lash line with a Morphe E36. This is my favorite lower lash line brush because it's like a pencil brush except it's rounded on the ends, on the end, and it's so soft it doesn't feel like you're scratching your skin off. I find most pencil brushes to be way too scratchy for my lash line. And kind of smoke that out. I'm going to go into MFEO and go just right underneath that. And just kind of smoke out that bottom that bottom line there with the lighter shade. I'm going to go very 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 Tightly with the chip shade right on the very outside, maybe third, just to kind of match that up with the outer V. Like that. All right, I feel really happy with the way um, the eyes look, except. I feel like I really need to reapply the glitter and I'm going to need to use a brush I think because I'm going to need to be more precise for, with where I want it. So I'm just going to pull out the wand here and use, this is a Coastal Scents BRC N13 and I'm going to use that just to pat this back on where I want it. doing a cut crease with glitter. And I'm going to kind of just drag it into the outside area here, not in a full covered opaque way, but just kind of dragging it into there so that when I use my outside corner brush again, it'll kind of blend those two areas together. I'm going to let that dry before I look back up at you again. I'm just going to real quickly go right along the outside line of that and kind of pull those together here. Take my tar eyelash curler and quickly curl my lashes. Again, try not to disturb the glitter. I'm getting gonna try something new. I'm being very courageous today, trying new things on camera where I'm probably gonna mess it up. But makeup and finding out what works for you is trial and error almost every time. So, I'll just be an innovator today. I'm going to use the Man Eater uh, Liquid Eyeliner by Tarte. I've used it one other time and it kind of smeared so I'm a little bit nervous, but it's real liquidy so I was thinking it might go over the glitter pretty well. So, we're going to give her a whirl and see how it goes. Gonna have to wipe the glitter off as we go here.
There's some areas that look a little bit jagged. I'm going to try to fix those. We're going over the glitter pretty well, actually. I'm going to clean my brush on my eyeliner, close it up, and shake it a little before I start on the other eye. good wipe this brush off real good so the next time I use this it won't be covered with glitter you know what glitter is usually a bad idea <laughs> just so you know when it goes when it works out well it's beautiful but when it doesn't it is and I think this did turn out beautifully but I'm going to have glitter all over my face. In fact, I'm probably going to go in with a piece of uh, tape here in a minute and see if I can get some of it off. Before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and do my mascara. For my bottom lashes, I'm going to use Lash Accelerator, like always. When I use anything different, I don't like the way it looks. So why not stick with a tried and true? Yes, I do have glitter, glittery eyelashes. I was born that way, don't you know? Whoa. And for my top lashes, I'm going to prepare for falsies. I'm going to use my Benefit Roller Lash. Before I go in and put on my false lashes, I'm going to go ahead and do my lips. I'm going to start off with the Kat Von D Everlasting Lip Liner in Lolita. And then I'm going to use Dose of Colors Liquid Lipstick in Stone. I think this color will go nicely with the eyes. Kisses to the light across my face. <laughs> well. All right. Um, today I'm going to use the Kiss Lashes number 11. These are really similar to the Ardell Demi Wispies, but I like these better because the band is just a little bit shorter across and I don't have to cut them. And so that's why I choose these over the Ardell. They have about the same effect as far as my opinion. Um, so as always, I'm going to use my e.l.f. tweezers. And um, I think this is Japanesque um, eyelash tool that I use to squeeze everything together. Kind of brings your natural lashes and the false lashes together. And um, the Kiss Lash Adhesive Strip Lash Adhesive, which is my favorite. I haven't found one that I like better. Duo, um, Japanesque. I've tried um, all kinds of different ones and this has been the best one. It hangs on for dear life and that's what you want when you have something that could potentially fall off your face. 
in front of people. We don't want that. I also love it because it turns blue as it gets tacky. And so you know when it's ready for you. So I grab them in the center like that. And put a thin layer of glue onto the band. Try to spread it evenly, but I also go in, get a little extra, and try to make sure that I kind of have a little, I don't want to call it a glob, but a little extra on the outer corners where they have the potential to lift. So I'm just gonna wave this and wave this and wave this and let it dry. I can't tell you how many times in the process of waving this <laughs> that I've dropped it. And let me tell you something, when you drop a, a false lash, it will just like vanish into thin air and it will never to be seen again. And I don't know why it happens that way, but it does. I'm trying not to blow on it because that's usually what I do. I'm going to. I can't help it. I have to do it. All right. I'm going to clear up my area here so I have the leverage of my elbow on the table. And I'm going to go in and try to center it. I'm going to put my camera back down a little bit. Try to center it as well as you can and put it right down as close to where your lashes come out as you can. If it's tacky, it'll stay there. If it's not ready, it will come back off and then you'll have a glob of glue on your eye and let's just not go there. So then I pull the outer corner and place it where I want it push down, then I go into the inner corner, place it where I want it, and push it down. And my history shows that the first lash goes on perfectly, beautifully, and then the second lash is a hot mess. So say a prayer for me right now that the second lash is going to be as cooperative as the first lash. Deal? Here we go in with lash number two. May the lash gods ever be in my favor right now, right? There we go. I'm gonna get a better grip here before I start flailing it around. We don't want the vanishing eyelash. <sighs> What do you think of my eyelashes light on my face? What do you think of my glitter light on my face? Maybe we should just become friends since it's intent on hanging out here and never leaving. Maybe we just need to be besties. Okay, prayers in three, two, one. Going in. Good start, good start. Gonna place the outer corner. It's a little bit too far over, so I'm gonna pull it. Place the outer corner, press it in. Place the inner corner, push it in. What? 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 Is the second one on? And we didn't have a fiasco? And I didn't glue my eye together? What? <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Okay guys, that is the final look here. I have everything on my face. I've got one more little step to do that um, just kind of make sure that the false lashes blend in. I'm going to go in with my Japanesque 
little eyelash tool and squeeze together the natural lash and the false lash. Obviously be very careful when you have a metal implement around your eye. This one, I'm going to let it dry a little bit. I'm going to go in with, I was going to use that, but I'm going to get my Better Than Sex Mascara. I love this because it has 8,000 bristles. And just to kind of go with the base together, I don't go all the way up the false lash, just where my natural lash is. It kind of helps blend those together too. I'm going to go in here and squeeze these babies together. And do the same thing on this eye. Right on. Right on, right on, right on. I like it. Okay, I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to strangle that light. <laughs> I'm going to go get a piece of scotch tape and try to get some of this glitter off my eye and I'll be back. Just to finish everything off, I'm going to use my Urban Decay D-Slick Setting Spray just to lock it all in. So here we go. Hmm. Nice and refreshing too. Nice little finishing touch. Okay guys, this is the finished look. I'll give you a little bit of a close up. I think it turned out really pretty actually. Even with all the glitter hoopla, I think it's really pretty. So, <laughs> out of the three looks, if you've gotten to see them all, which one did you like? Did you like the one with the pop of color? Did you like the kind of everyday look? Or do you like the kind of glittery, glamzy, glammed out, fancy foo-foo? Which one did you like the best? You can tell me in the comments below. Thank you so much for joining me today. It means a lot that you take some time out of your day to spend with me, and I hope you'll come back again soon. Bye, guys. Today I... I will probably go in with a little bit more concealer than I ordinarily use. Not concealer. <sighs> My brain. Any day now. Bronzer! <gasps> Bronzer. <laughs> Bronzer. Yay. Oh, my lord. Help me, help me, help me. Wow. My Urban Decay. Urban Decay. I'm going to use my Urban Decay D-Slip. D-Slip. <laughs> you can tell me in the con um today i did kind of a glam a glammed out i can't talk man but i just wanted to do a really glitter glitter can you quit huffing and puffing baby girl can you quit huffing and puffing your, I know, I know you're hot, but can you please quit huffing and puffing? I love you. Please stop it. Good girl. Oh, you're such a good girl. Mama loves you. Hi guys. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have for you an... <sighs> Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I have for you another eye tutorial 
on the oh mamacita 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 i know you're hot i know um i really have enjoyed using this palette i know there are so many different looks that you can can oh mama please stop please stop please stop patrick are you awake will you call marley please Go see daddy? Can you go see daddy? Can you go? Can you go see daddy? So mama can finish, please, please. Will you call her again? Go see daddy. <gasps> go see daddy. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Before I even get started talking, you may hear my dog down here huffing and puffing. She won't go out of my room. So, please forgive me. I had to do a disclaimer for you. Yeah. <laughs> you are so not caring right now, huh? So don't care that you're messing up mama's video. That's all right. I love you anyway. <laughs> you know your eyelashes are long when you open your eyes and they touch your eyebrows right Marley <laughs> Lord have mercy okay <sighs> okay I give I give, I give, I give, I give. Oh, I love the sleeves on this shirt. I give. And yes, I am ADD if you are wondering. Bye, guys. Okay, I give, for real. For real, I give this time, for real. For real, I give, for real. Craziness. So much fun. <laughs>